Well, how's it going you guys? Welcome back to the Needy Homesteader channel and our very first video in the Bread Baking for Beginners workshop. I'm super excited you guys about this video and we are going to keep it very, very simple. I gave you uh, the ingredients um, last night. I will leave that link up above in a video for anybody who might have missed it and you want to know what you need. Um, so we are going to get started here. I'm my KitchenAid mixer uh, because well, I just can't hand knead dough anymore. But if you don't have a mixer, you can definitely make this in a bowl and hand knead it. I do have a video on bread baking and hand kneading. I will leave that video up above for you guys for anybody who does have to hand knead and you need something to reference. So I'll leave that video for you guys. All right, so the goal here, you guys, is to keep this very, very simple for you so you are not overwhelmed and so that you are encouraged by your results so that you will keep going and keep making this. And once you master this recipe, um, we're going to move on to uh, actually baking a loaf of bread, which will, will require a few extra ingredients as well as an extra rise. This bread, we are going to make a very crusty, beautiful uh, Italian loaf. Um, it's going to be very simple and I know many of you uh, were excited to hear that you guys could actually turn this into like a like a French bread pizza so I might actually record that as well and make that a secondary video for you guys to fall back on but with this bread recipe you can make anything from a loaf of bread to dinner rolls to uh, baguettes to pizza crust, okay? It's very versatile and it's very easy. So it's great for beginners. So anybody out there new to bread, or if you've got a kiddo who's new to uh, baking bread, um, this is a great homeschool, home economics uh, bread to teach them. So, all right, let's get started. Okay, so when you're making bread, there is a specific order that you should put your ingredients in. And remember, I'm just a mom. <laughs> Bacon bread, okay, if you want more detail about different types of yeasts or hydration levels in bread and all of those things, I would recommend um, buying a couple really good uh, bread baking books or go to the library and check some out and read all you can about it. This is just going to be a very simple um, watered down version of baking bread for you guys just because I want you to have success in the kitchen when it comes to baking bread. Um, all right, now with that said, there is a certain way that you should layer the things in your bowl, the items in your bowl, um, so that you have the best success. And that is because uh, salt can actually kill yeast. So we wanna keep that as far away from our yeast as possible. So I'm just going to share with you how I layer my ingredients in my bowl, okay? We are gonna start with one tablespoon of instant yeast, okay? I keep mine in the freezer. So this is why I like my water to be a little warm on the warm side because um, this is frozen and I wanna really wake this up, okay? So this is one leveled uh, tablespoon of yeast. I use instant yeast. If you are using a traditional yeast, you are gonna want to activate this and I will show you uh, where you would do that. All right, now to this, we are gonna add two cups of warm water. Warm water is gonna be between 105 degrees and 115. I keep mine around uh, 115 because like I said, my yeast is frozen and I really want to activate it and wake it up. If you keep your yeast in the freezer, it will last longer. <laughs> it's okay in the cupboard, better in the fridge, best in the freezer. And there's no reason to thaw it out or anything like that. Bring it out of your freezer, put it in, and then put your yeast back in the freezer, the unused yeast. All right, now to this, we are going to add one tablespoon of sugar. Okay, and I just kind of sprinkle that right on top. Now, this is where if you are using traditional yeast, you're gonna mix that about, and then you're going to leave this to sit 
for, and it depends on what yeast you're using, but typically it's 10 to 15 minutes to wake it up. Uh, but with instant yeast, you don't have to do that. That's why I like using instant yeast. Yeast. It's broken down a little bit further than traditional yeast, and so there's no reason to uh, bloom it, okay? So now that we have that in there, we're gonna go ahead and add our flour. Okay, so in this recipe, we are using just simple all-purpose flour. You can use bread flour if you have it, but we're keeping it really easy for you guys. And this is how you're going to measure out your flour if you're not weighing it. Now, to be honest, I weigh all my flour now. Um, it's just a lot more accurate that way, but I know most of you uh, don't, so we're gonna do it just a very easy way, okay? So this is a one cup measuring cup, and so what I do is I take a regular butter knife, and you're gonna overfill your cup, and then with the back of the butter knife, which is the flat edge, you're just gonna go ahead and scoop out up the top. So you're not gonna hard pack this, you're just going to literally scoop it, Okay, nice and loose, scrape off the top, and then you're gonna add it into your bowl. And we are adding four to five cups, okay? So it's all gonna depend on how warm your kitchen is, how humid your kitchen is. Every time you bake bread, it might be a little bit different on the amounts that you use. So you kind of just, bread is one of those things that every time you make it, it's gonna be a little different and you're just gonna kind of roll with it. So right to start, we're gonna add four cups and then if we need more, we will add more, okay? So I'm gonna just put four cups into my bowl there and then I'll bring you back so you can see inside that bowl. And you can start seeing some of the bubbles that will start happening when your yeast is waking up and becoming active. Okay, so now this is where I add the salt. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna layer that salt right on top of the flour so it doesn't go into the yeast part. Now don't forget the salt because without it, your bread will be flavorless, okay? So we're adding two teaspoons of salt to this recipe here. Okay, and so I'm just gonna layer that right on top of the, um, the flour. So you never wanna just throw the salt in with your yeast and your flour or your sugar and your water. Um, because you do risk killing your yeast that way, okay? So then we're gonna add to this three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And I'm just gonna pour that right on top of the flour. Okay, just like that. Now, this recipe is very versatile. So if you wanted to make a flavored bread, at this time, you could do that. Sometimes I'll throw in some rosemary, some thyme, some oregano. Uh, you can throw in some uh, sun-dried tomatoes at this point and make this a very savory bread, especially if you're gonna use it as an Italian loaf. Um, you can add pepper to it and make it a pepper bread and it will serve beautifully next to um, like a Philly steak sandwich. So it's totally up to you. But as you can see, things are getting bubbly and waking up. And that's it, you guys. So now I'm gonna lift up the bowl and we're gonna turn it on. Now, if you are using a KitchenAid mixer, you never wanna go past the, the speed two on your uh, mixer. So we're gonna turn this on. That's a level one and that's a level two. Now I'm gonna watch this and I'm gonna see how this comes together. You want the sides of your bowl to come clean, okay? So if it's too sticky, we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit at a time, some extra flour, until we get this dough ball beautiful and everything is pulled away from the side. And then we're gonna let this knead for five minutes, okay? So I'm just gonna watch as this all comes together. You can have a little better view inside the bowl there. Don't feel like you have to rush this. Uh, take your time, let that dough come together properly, 
uh, because this is going to this is going to eventually give you that beautiful crumb that you are going to want in your bread okay and you can start seeing now it's starting to pull away from the side a little bit and it's starting to form that dough ball we're looking for I'm gonna leave a link down below um, to uh, some extra information for you guys on um, underproofing and overproofing your bread uh, just to help you guys out a little bit. This is coming together beautifully. Sometimes you're only going to need four cups. Sometimes you're gonna need five. It's all gonna depend on how hot your kitchen is and how much humidity you have in the air. Now I can already tell that it's a little sticky, okay? And you can tell if you touch it and your hand, your fingers come out uh, dirty, it's a little too sticky, okay? And always make sure that you have clean hands and make sure that you take all your jewelry off when, um, when you uh, go to bake bread because your jewelry holds a lot of bacteria, even if they're clean. Okay, so we're gonna turn this back on. And I'm just gonna tap a little bit of extra flour in here. And I'm gonna see how that comes together. And this is the point where you just wanna watch and be patient and to me this is part of the fun of making bread is uh, having it come together. Helping it along. <laughs> And as long as I see that it is sticky on the bottom, I'm going to be adding just a little bit extra flour. But don't add too much. You can add, add a, if you are um, a little better with a tablespoon, add a tablespoon at a time. And the more that you make bread, the easier this will become for you uh, to be able to decipher if it needs extra flour or not. You really just want to get that dough ball lifted off the bottom and away from the sides of the bowl. And it's really getting there. You see the bottom? It's really starting to clean up now. Oh yeah, that's, that's looking good. It's looking really good. I'm gonna add just a little bit more. Now you don't want to add too much because you don't want your dough to dry. Uh, that will also affect the crumb and it'll just be a really tough bread and you don't want a tough bread. But do you see how the bowl is starting to clean up now? And just a tiny bit more, maybe a teaspoon. Now, that is looking beautiful. It's just a tad bit sticky still. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that back on. And I'm just gonna add probably another teaspoon. And you can really see how the bowl has cleaned up. Do you see it? And that is beautiful. So, I'm to get my fingers a little clean here. I want to touch it. And it's getting a lot better. Now it's slightly sticky, but do you see that it's not sticking on my fingers anymore? Do you see that? That's how we know we are just about there. I'm probably going to add just maybe another teaspoon of flour. And that should do it. I think this is the trickiest part to making bread, but do you see how clean, do you see how it's lifting up off the bottom 
of the bowl. The bowl is nice and clean. It's all pulled away from the sides. And um, I can touch it now and have nothing on my hands. But it's soft. It should feel like um, it should feel like a really soft Play-Doh. Okay. And I'm just gonna add just a tiny piece, not even a teaspoon, and that is going to do it. That is beautiful. So now. It's at this point where I'm gonna set my timer on my stove for five minutes, okay? And we're gonna turn this back on it too. Keep your eye on it because if it gets soft again and starts getting sticky, you might need to add a little bit extra flour. But once it gets going like this, you should be good. And um, we are now going to time for five minutes and we're gonna let this move. nice and clean the bowl got. Now, you might notice that you want to need this um, a little while longer. There's my timer. That is totally up to you. You pretty much want to look uh, and make sure that it looks pretty smooth, okay? That's, that's really what you're looking for. Um, if you notice that it's still not quite smooth enough, you can go ahead and take it, you know, take another two minutes um, at the kneading. Um, but this looks good to me. So we are going to go ahead. I'm going to scoot you back. We're going to drop. Actually, I think I can do it around you. There we go. So we are now going to take the dough hook off of the mixer. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and just peel off the dough and get my hook um, in the sink. And now I'm gonna scoot you back and we're gonna get this out of the bowl. Okay, so here is our dough in a bowl. What you're gonna want is a nice dough scraper. Uh, this one is actually a KitchenAid one and I will leave a link for it down below in case you need one, okay? Um, you can do it with a spatula if you don't have a dough scraper. Uh, that's fine too. The, this, if you plan on making a lot of bread though, you're gonna wanna pick up a dough scraper because it'll just make your life easier. So here we have it. So this is what I do. You're gonna go inside, okay? And you're just going to get all that dough scraped together, okay? And then we're just going to go ahead and scrape it right out of the bowl. And you wanna make sure your countertop is nice and clean okay so there's our dough again you want to make sure that when you touch it it's not sticking to you and then we're just going to hand knead it for a minute okay if you notice it's a little too sticky what i do is you can add just a little bit of olive oil just a little bit to your surface i don't use flour because i just noticed with flour um it's a little too um it gets a little too dry so if anything I'll use a little bit of oil. Uh, what you want to do is when you hand knead this, right, you're folding it over and you're pushing it away. Fold it over, push it away, fold it over, push it away. So if you have to hand knead, you know how to do that. But I like to hand knead this a little bit. Get this formed into a ball, okay? And then I like to go ahead and I like to tuck it under and I like just a really pretty dough ball okay it should look pretty smooth for you on the top um, sometimes if you let it rest it will uh, smooth itself out um, you just want a nice smooth looking dough ball okay and that looks beautiful to me so I'm gonna go ahead and reuse my bowl because it's already dirty now let's move my dough ball out of the way for a minute. So there's our bowl. And what I do is I just take some olive oil, nothing fancy. I just go ahead and put some in there, about a tablespoon or so. You just don't want the dough 
um, sticking to the inside of your bowl, okay? Then we're gonna take our dough ball and we are going to spin it in the oil. Then we're gonna flip it. And this is where we're gonna let it rest and rise for 30 minutes. Really easy recipe, you guys. 30 minute rise, just one, not two. And, um, and then we can come back and we will shape this and get it into our bread loaf. What I like to do at this point is I like to add a damp flour sack towel to it. So um, let me grab one of those. Okay, so this is what one looks like. And what I like to do is run it under hot water and then wring it out really well. And then we'll put it on top of the bowl. I'm just gonna go ahead and lay it over my bowl. I usually tuck the, the excess into, um, into my handle <laughs> like that. And then that is it. <laughs> These cloths have seen better days. I should buy some new ones. There we have it. Okay, now, where do you put it? Well, you wanna put it somewhere warm, okay? Cause you want it to rise. Um, cold draft will not do your dough any good. So sometimes I put them under my counter lights. Um, I do have an oven that allows me to proof bread. I actually have a proof setting. So I keep the oven light on, I set it on proof and I put it in there. If you have a um, Excalibur dehydrator, you can proof your bread in there. They actually have a proof setting for bread in um, on that dehydrator. So you can put it in there. Um, anywhere where it's warm and it's out of the way of having a draft. You just want it warm, okay? Not too warm, because you don't want to bake it. Um, but warm enough to where it will rise, okay? So I will see you guys back here. Well, one second your time, 30 minutes my time. And then um, we'll take this out and we'll shape it. Okay, you guys, so it's been a half hour. And now I um, changed my oven from proof setting to preheating to 425 degrees, okay? And here is our dough. So it's doubled in size, it looks beautiful. And we are going to get out just a cookie sheet, that's all you need. Some of you asked me if you could use parchment paper and you can, so I will use parchment paper. To show you. So parchment paper, when it comes in a roll, I always tip it upside down and then it won't roll back up on you. <laughs> okay, so that is ready. We'll just put that up on the bar there. All right, so here's our dough. Now we're gonna do what they call punch it down, okay? me down here a little bit so now we're gonna punch it down which means <laughs> you could punch it if you wanted to but just lightly deflate it and get the gases out of it okay and then from there we're just gonna lift it right up out of the bowl which we'll put off to the side and now this is where we are going to shape it okay so what I do and any kind of dry pieces you can just Kind of remove off of there so what i do is i just press it out okay and it should be nice and soft and supple and it should really it kind of you know reminds me of like a play-doh and what i do is i kind of shape it out to the shape of a rectangle now this is very versatile okay so at this point you could make this a tray of pizza you could cut this in half and make this two large round pizzas if you have pizza pans. You can flatten this out, divide it up, and make a dozen dinner rolls with this. Um, you can flatten this out and actually create a uh, pizza roll with this. All right, we have this all stretched out, okay, to about a rectangle. All right, and now it's up to you on how you wanna shape it, all right? I like to roll it like that, okay? 
so kind of short end to end. Okay, and then when I roll it, I take the seam and I pinch it. Okay, pinch the seam together like that. And then seam side down, I just like to give it a kind of a, a nice little push. Now, if you want, you can make this loaf fatter if you want. Um, you can make it long and thin. You can divide it, this into three and create baguettes, which I will make a video on because there's so many of you that want to see that video. Um, you don't need a baguette pan. You can use this on a cookie sheet as well, but if you have a baguette pan, it's so much better uh, because the baguette pans, I'll leave a link to them down below, the ones that I have, they have holes in the pan so the crust gets nice and crusty and it's really really good so that is it as far as shaping you can shape it any way that you want we are just going to leave it kind of long like this because um there are so many of you that are hitting me up saying that you guys that you would want to make this into a, like a french bread pizza and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that for you guys. I'm going to bake this up and then I'm going to turn it into a French bread pizza for my kids for lunch <laughs> instead of serving it for dinner. I was going to serve it for dinner. Um, all right. So nice and long, just like that. Now, what a bread lame looks like. It is um, like a razor blade, if you will. It's very thin. Um, and this is what they use to cut bread and make decorations. I'll leave a link to this down below in case you want to invest in one. They're not very much and they're very handy dandy. Or you can use a bread knife just as easy. Make sure that it's a sharp one. You can use a steak knife. Um, but these create beautiful um what i like to do is vent this a little bit otherwise when you bake it um you might notice and if you've made bread before it kind of explodes out out of the side um gets a little misshapen if you vent this bread as you bake it it won't do that it'll keep its really nice shape okay so let's see if i can get you in here a little bit closer okay so i'm going to show you what it looks like with the lame Okay, and then I will show you with a bread knife. So either one is just as good. The lame does a little bit better of a job. <laughs> so um, you can use either one that you want, but I usually like to do about five of them on a bread this size. Okay, and this will give it that really pretty, um, you know, Italian bread look. Or French bread, <laughs> whichever. Okay, it's at this point now we're going to introduce our egg. So let me grab an egg. Okay, so I'm just going to get a little bowl here, and I'm going to get one of my one of my chicken eggs here. This is a cochin egg, isn't it pretty? They're spotted. They're so pretty. And we are going to go ahead and just crack an egg in this. Okay like so okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add just a little smidgen okay maybe a teaspoon at most water to our egg then you're gonna puncture it okay and then you're just gonna whip it up a little bit <laughs> this is gonna help create a beautiful crust you guys and this is also going to be the secret to any kind of topping that you want to put on your bread this is what's gonna help make it stick and now we're just going to baste it with this egg wash right in um, the little uh, cuts that you made and everything and you want to get it all the way on the edges because this is what's going to give a really pretty crust to this it's going to make it shiny it's going to make it golden brown it's going to be really pretty Make sure 
sure that this side is nice and done. And once you get this nice and basted, of course mine is going to be a little extra yellow because it's a fresh egg. Now once you get this nice and basted, we will be ready to get this in the oven because I heard my oven is ready to go. Now it's at this time that if you want to add a topping to this, you can do so. Uh, sesame seeds, poppy seeds, everything, bagel seasoning, anything that you want, you can go ahead, add it now and it will stick. Okay, and I just wanna give you a nice view of that. Now we are gonna add this to a 425 degree oven. We're gonna bake it 20 to 25 minutes until it's golden brown. And then when that happens, I will bring you guys back um, and I will show you what it looks like when it's done. Now you can take a temperature of it if you want, um, but I just knock on it and when it sounds nice and hollow, you know that it's fully baked. All right, okay, I will see you guys in about 20, 25 minutes. All right, guys, so my timer just went off and we are gonna bring this out. And it looks beautiful. So now, you wanna make sure that it is baked. You're gonna just tap on it and it should sound nice and hollow for you. There's our first loaf of bread. Like I said, you can add a topping to this, so it'd be beautiful. I left mine plain just to make it simple. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this into a French bread pizza, and I will show you how I do that in another video. Place it there. <laughs> And there, there you have it, you guys. I hope this bread brings you so much success. And if you don't get it the first time, that's okay. Try again. You will get it, I promise. This is such a nice, easy loaf to start with so that you can um, gain some confidence in your bread making skills. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, let it cool before you slice into it because you want that moisture to stay in there. If you slice into it when it's hot, you'll lose all the moisture in the bread. It'll end up being really dry on you. So let it cool and, um, and then slice it up and enjoy it, you guys. Leave me a comment down below letting me know how your first loaf ends up turning out. And um, like I said, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I will try my best to answer them for you, okay? All right, you guys, I'll be seeing you soon. Next video, we'll be turning this into uh, a pizza for your family. All right, guys, I'll see you.